Welcome to the Homesteading for Beginners podcast. This is Mona Weathers, your host, and I am a homesteading coach teaching beginner homesteaders how to start and maintain a healthy homestead that aligns with their goals for self-sufficiency in a way that is sustainable and profitable. If that describes you, then you are in the right place. So let's get started with the topic today. In this episode, we'll be talking about homesteading as a mom, as a mama. And if you're not a mom, you're welcome to listen to this, of course, and you will probably find some, uh, you know, insights for yourself as well. But I'm going to be specifically speaking to those of you who are mothers, especially mothers with young children. Um, So if that sounds like you, then, you know, listen to this episode and hopefully it'll help you as well. Um, I have been seeing some things and it was uh, this podcast episode idea came from something that was recently posted in a Facebook group, not my own Facebook group, but another one. And I, I, I worry a little bit about some of the homesteading, the new homesteaders that are coming up and thinking that they have to do more than they should do. So as moms, we want to, you know, make sure that our children have the best. We want to give them the life experiences that we didn't have maybe, or that we did have. And we want to make sure that they have those as well. Um, A lot of my listeners are millennials right now, which are my children. I have, I have millennials and I have a Gen Zer. I just, I kind of know the thoughts that are going through your head. If you happen to be a millennial. Um, I kind of know those thoughts mainly because I went through a lot of that as well. I That's when my homestead started was when I was at the age that you are right now. If you are a millennial, uh, I started my homesteading journey at that age. And when I was introduced to it, you know, I knew all my life that I wanted to be a farm girl and I wanted to have a farm mostly for this, for the horses, which I have. And I'm so thankful for Um, But there were some really big years of struggle for me and trying to find the right balance between what I think my family needed and what they really needed and what they needed from me. And I just want to make sure that as you're growing your home, as you're building your homestead, as you're planning for this future that you want, um, as you're expanding, that you keep some cert some things in mind, because it can quickly and easily get out of hand. And I have experience to back that statement up. I have done that myself. And I wanted to, you know, also encourage you to know that the what you do with your children that's outside of all the homesteading things is so important. And that in that itself is a job. It's a beautiful, wonderful, motherhood is beautiful, wonderful job. It's not like a, you know, it's not always that way, but, (laughs) but it's, it's, you have already, your time commitment is already spread to nurturing your children, caring for them, feeding them. And you want to make sure there's a good balance between that and then adding things to your life that include, you know, gardening and, and animals, although all of those things are great for children as well. I'm not saying don't do any of those. I'm not saying don't do any of those things. But the amount that you do matters. And it may not feel like it matters because just one more thing is you think that there's just one more thing. I kept doing that to myself during my journey as a younger mom. I'm like, ah, it's just like, what is that, five minutes more to my day to add these animals? What is it like? It's just one more animal, you know? Or it's just w- one more extension of the garden, which I did that like three times as we were living in California. And those one more things can really add up. And then all of a sudden you feel like you cannot get anything done. And you're struggling and struggling to get your life in some sort of balance and order and you're not able to show up for, you know, your kids, or you're not able to show up for your husband, or you're not able to show up for yourself and, you know, give yourself space, 
it's really important for moms to give, get your own space and have just, even if it's minutes at a time, but have your own space because, you know, that's how we, that's how we refuel ourselves. That's how we get stronger when we have rest. So my, my message today really is, uh, don't think, first of all, don't compare your journey with somebody else's. And if you see that they have all the things that you want, it doesn't mean that their life is easy. If they, their life is easy for some reason, they, there's other reasons why that's possible. Either they are not being available for their children and their family, or they have help in other ways. Or, you know, there are those few people that are very organized and very able to do all the things. But it doesn't mean that it's better than you. That may be, maybe you are like not a very organized person. I never was. I never really was an organized person. I, di I fought routine so much. I did not, I thought routine was going to stifle my creativity. But what years took me, took me years to realize that routine actually helps my creativity. <laughs> Having some sort of pattern helps uh, um, relieve some of the mental pressure that you have uh, that you have with the you know the mental pressure that all the things that you didn't do if you had a routine if you have a routine and you're able to get most of the things that you need to get done it frees up your mind to be able to do the things that you really want to do so if you happen to be you know struggling in that way just remember that you know first of all other people just don't compare yourself to them um, you know, make, make your own path, basically, you know, like make your own path, design the homesteading life you want. Um, if it's to be with your kids all the time, 24 hours, you know, or to be with them more or whatever it is, design it so that that is possible. Don't, you know, make it about having all of the things that you think will make you more self-sufficient. Make it about things that will make you more sustainable, like the lifestyle sustainable. We all want the self-sufficiency skills, but we also need to make sure that those self-sufficiency skills and those things that we add onto our plate are sustainable. So either have seasons where you know that it's going to be rough and you let go of it then after that, or just pace yourself, pace yourself. So I'm kind of going all over the place with this episode. I just wanted to give some ins some of my thoughts on this because I recently saw on Facebook a, a woman who was was talking about how she was asking the group how to get all of the things done. Like she had several livestock, horses and other livestock and birds and she wanted to do canning and sourdough bread and all like she's like She's like asking, how do you do all of it? And um, my advice to her was don't do all of it. Like reduce your amount of thing, you know, like if, if at all possible, downsize. Even if it's just for a season, it's okay to downsize. I know some of these animals we get really attached to and it's really hard to let go. I have had to let go of many animals, especially when we moved to California, from California to here in Georgia. And that was hard because I loved my goats. Like they were my, they were my dogs kind of. I always say that goats are similar to dogs in that they love affection and they're just pl very playful. So I really uh, miss that. So I know, but I had to downsize to move here. And so I know the feeling but, you know, sometimes, you know, you can bless another family with the beautiful animals that you've raised. Just remember that. You can bless another family. You, the time that you invested in them is not going to waste um, if you give it to the, you know, sell or give, it, give them to the right families. But just knowing that you can downsize, it will relieve so much pressure on you and that, that one more thing that you keep kept adding, you know, maybe it's time to go backwards with that and and reduce the amount that you have on your plate because you don't have to do all of the things and I also told her you know some of these things are like canning that those are activities that I think are best done with other people like have it have other adults this is why I told her like 
it, those things that you can do with other people, do them with adults so that it's not s so much pressure. And she liked that. She was like, I could do this with my mother. You know, I could do the canning with my mother. And so I, I just think, you know, that's something you need to remember that the things that you want to do, either have your community help you do those things on your own. You know, there's a lot, there are a lot of people who just want to be around homesteading and they don't necessarily want their own homestead. So they are willing to help you. So this is why it's so important to have this local community. But just remember that those people are available for to you if you have grown your community. And in the future here soon, I will be doing another episode on uh, community building and cultivating community and how you can do that and what that takes and what that means. So either you have people help you with the things on your own homestead or you go to them. Like there's nothing wrong with it. It doesn't just because we don't do it on our own home doesn't mean it's not a homesteading activity or skill. And it doesn't give it less value because you didn't do it yourself. You know, it actually probably gives it more value and memory uh, when you do it with other people because you have conversations, you learn with each other. It's just, it's just a beautiful thing when it happens that way. So my encouragement to you today, if you are a mom, just know that this is a precious and quick time of your life it will go by so fast <laughs> and i know people always say that it's in the blink a blink of an eye your your kids are grown you know savor these moments because they are growing fast and they're watching you and they're watching how you're reacting to the world and they're watching how how you th view yourself so don't beat up on yourself because th they're watching that too give yourself um room to grow, give yourself, you know, forgive yourself of things that you've mistakes you've made, treat yourself like a friend. Um, and then be that friend for other people. And you know, they're, they're watching that. And it's, it's, it's great. I mean, they, they're watching the good and the bad. <laughs> um, but we can, all we can do is our best, right? So I just highly encourage you just to breathe a little bit and real and give yourself space and try not to do all of the things. And I guess that's about it. I just really want I just really felt it the need to encourage young moms right now. And um, this is why it's really important to do the planning that I teach um, to plan ahead, uh, even if it's just a little bit, and to really think about wh what your you, you want your future to look like. You know, what do you want yourself to look like in five years? Uh, what do you want your life to look like? What do you, do you want to have a certain number of skills learned? Do you want to have one skill mastered? Do you, you know, or like be specific with your goals and it'll help you to reach them quicker and better. You know, you're not just collecting a bunch of uh, skills and collecting a bunch of things, collecting a bunch of animals, and then at the end of it, you're like, what did I just do? <laughs> um, so that's my encouragement to you. I hope this was helpful. If you would like to um, reach out to me, my, my email address is mona at healthyhomesteading.com, or you can message me on Instagram as well. Please don't forget to um, leave a five-star rating. It does help other people to know that the show is here and to encourage them to listen. So I really would appreciate that. It's usually on your app somewhere. Uh, uh, you know, if you're on Apple or Spotify, that's usually the places that you can rate the show. And I guess that is all for today. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day or evening. And I will talk to you next week.